Hi and welcome back. Another Waveform 11 video. This time we're going to focus on MIDI editing and I'm going to return to the note editing toolbar. This is one of the quick actions that you can use. Now this is not something that is is or was originally included with Waveform 11 though it is in the beta at this point. Right now we're at 11.1. The note editing toolbar quick actions preset is not naturally in that version but you can add it to any version of 11 if you have the file now this is something i came up with for my own use and i showed it in some other videos kind of just in passing because i'm using it you could easily create your own i just took a lot of the keyboard shortcuts and organized them on this quick actions bar now this is a Waveform 11 Pro feature. So if you're on a different version of Waveform, then this is probably not going to work for you. But I'm going to show you how to add this. I've included in the notes uh, down below this video a link where you can download the file for this. Now once you download it, there's a zip file, and inside that zip file is noteediting.actions. This is the actual preset, and I'm going to show you how to install that. There's also a readme file here that also explains the steps to install it. It's really easy. You just drag this file into a specific folder location, and I'm going to show you how to locate that right now. So you need to go to the Settings tab, and in the File Locations page, you'll see this button right here, Show Settings Folder. So the next thing I'm going to do is click that, and then this opens this waveform folder right here. This is buried in the presets on your system, or it's a folder that's a kind of a system folder that's part of the app install. Now inside of here, you'll find a quick actions folder. If you open that up, you'll see the various quick actions toolbar files. So if I go here and look at these files, you'll see that I've got views, default panels, note editing, which I've added, function keys, which I added in a previous video. So you'll find those all right there. So what we want to do is you're going to drag from this file that I'm linking down below, note actions, and drag it here into this quick actions. That will give you access to this. If you happen to be running the beta version that's the beta after 11.1 it's already in there i sent it to the developers and they rolled it into future releases so depending on when you watch this video you may or may not have this if it's not there you can download it and just drag that file in so what does this do well it really does a lot of the things that you can find in the various keyboard shortcuts that you could potentially do. A lot of these things are also available right in the MIDI editor. But I'm going to get started and show you kind of how these things work. So the first thing I'm going to do is to choose the pencil tool, put in a note, and I'll just put in a, a C note right here. Now the very first thing is fit notes. Uh, actually, I'm going to come back to that. Let's put in a triad. So if I start on any note and click triad, it just basically builds your triad. I'm also, as I go through here, going to highlight some very helpful shortcuts for working with MIDI. Now that I've got some notes in there, I'm going to go back to the arrow tool or the pointer or selector tool. So the keyboard shortcut command and the slash key which would be a forward slash splits any note into two parts. So now I have two bars of notes. The other keyboard shortcut you could use is a D, which duplicates. So now I have triads across four bars. Now you'll also notice that the note colors are somewhat different. I have the note color feature on. I did this in a previous video, how to match chords to note colors. I have a 1, 6, 2, 5 progression typed in here with one chord per bar. But the, the chord doesn't quite line up because this would be a minor chord. Or I guess that's a 2 chord. So now I can move this note using another shortcut, which is hold down shift and move the up arrow. And that will move that chord. I'll do the same thing with this. 
and we'll move this node up. So what this means when it's green is that those notes are in the chord. If it's in blue like this, that means it's in the scale, which is the key of C right now, but it's not in the chord. So we can move those around and look for notes that actually fit within the chord. There. So that's what we have right now. Let's, I'll click on the actual MIDI clip, press the letter A to select the range, to set the range over the whole clip. And now I will also hit the letter keyboard shortcut L to set the loop over that. And then when I hit spacebar, I can play back. Now the sound that I'm using for this is from the Spitfire plugin called Labs. It's a really great thing you might want to check out. Labs is entirely free and this soft piano sound is amazing, but there's a lot of other sounds you can get. It's kind of like a sampler of the amazing Spitfire audio sample libraries. So check that out. But that's what we're going to be listening to in this demo. Now let's take a look at things we can do from the toolbar. The very first thing is if I select notes like this and hit fit notes, it will fit all the notes to the screen. So if you have your MIDI notes that are really tiny, then you can select one of them or select a few of them and then fit them on the screen. Now if you're, say you're, you're way zoomed in like this, this happens and you have these tiny, tiny MIDI notes, then just get one of them selected, then Command A, which would be Control A on a PC, or Command A, to select all of them, and then hit this Fit Notes, and it makes them all big. Maybe a little bit too big, but it's based on the keyboard shortcut that does the same thing. Then you can adjust it down and find all your notes. Now the triad we just did, but if we wanted to build a seventh note instead, let's delete these top two notes. The seventh will give you a four note chord. Click seventh, and now we have our seventh. This isn't part of the chord, it's just a major seventh chord it's putting in, but we can just bump that up by dragging it or nudging it to get a seventh chord as part of the progression. Now let's listen to that. How about we do a seventh chord here? We'll delete these and click seventh and now I've got a seventh chord. We'll move these around to see if we can find the chord tones like that. Really nice. Now you can also merge using the merge command right here. I believe that is Command M if I remember correctly. Yes, Command M or Control M if you're on a PC. But you can just click two MIDI notes or select two MIDI notes together and click Merge and then they'll be combined into one long note. So you can do that. Now split, I told you before, is command slash, or command forward slash, and you can also do that using this button right here. So if we want to do a bunch of splits, this is pretty handy, just click split a few times, and maybe we could subdivide one of these again to get a little bit more rhythm. And then we've got legato, which is the next thing here. So if you have some of your notes that are have gaps like this while you're editing, you might wind up getting it a little bit a little bit ragged. So the notes don't run into each other and you want them all to match up. This is useful for drum editing as well. So if I just select all this and do legato, then it will smooth all those out like that. Now let's try this right in here and see what it does. Yeah, see, you can take these and it will fill in the gaps between your selected notes. 
like that. I've got that a little ragged, so we'll go back here and do merge. And now we merge those back together. So that's merge, split, and legato. We also have octaves. Very, very useful in MIDI editing. Like this note is way up high. Maybe we want to move that down an octave. So we have up octave and down octave buttons. If we click that or click it down again. Or maybe you want to start to create a bass line from these lowest notes like that, then you could do down octave. And for what it's worth, this is also available on a right click option. So if you right click, see right in here, move notes up one octave, move notes down one octave. They also show you the keyboard shortcut here, command O for up an octave, shift command O, or down an octave, so that's also very helpful. This was something that was added fairly recently, this ability to right-click and have an access to those octaves. So I have those two notes on top of each other. Maybe I'll just delete that one. So you can also mute notes. I'm gonna hold down Command and drag to create a new note and go up and I'm going to divide this with the split command a few times there. And maybe we want to try to create sort of a rhythm here. So I'm going to split these all again, command. And it will split each of the selected notes. Now let's try taking some of those out to create a rhythm. So I'll choose the mute. Actually, I'll select some of these notes that I want to mute. Like this, and then click mute. And that will mute them and they won't play. That's really helpful if you're just trying things out. You might not want to delete those notes yet, but you want to try to mute them. And then we conveniently have the nudging commands, nudge up, nudge down. It's the same thing as holding shift and nudging. Good thing about nudging is that it does not change the timing. You can also nudge forward. Now the two note end buttons allow you to slightly shorten or lengthen notes. So if you click note end with the arrow pointing this way, you'll see that I can just take little bits off of that note or I can add little bits back onto that note. I find that is really quite handy. So if you're coming in here, maybe let's shorten these up a little bit or maybe shorten those up a little bit more in that one, something like that, or maybe to, you know, just manually move these around. That sort of thing. We also have the ability to randomize velocity. When you click this, it will pull up the randomized velocity dialog box. And now we could choose in the minimum velocity and maximum velocity. So we want to boost this up a little bit. I think our velocity is set at 80 for all those that we entered. You set that right here for new notes that you're drawing in. So let's randomize and get a little more variety uh, out of that. So we'll just go between 90 and maybe 120. 120, normally our range there is from 0 to 127. So we'll randomize the velocity a little bit. Listen back. So those are all the things we have on the toolbar. Now, clearly you can also customize this and add anything you want to it. There's also like these note end commands, there are already commands that are available in keyboard shortcuts to modify the note beginnings in the same way. So you could add that. I had a macro that did two things. When I select one note, first it selects all the notes and then selects, then does the note fit. 
So let me see if I still have that in here. Yes, select notes and fit. So you could customize it with something like this. This is a macro with two steps. So instead of having to select everything before you hit note fit, you just select any one note and then click fit notes. It selects them and fits. I didn't include that in the file because that's a custom macro that you wouldn't have unless you typed it in there. If you go to the keyboard shortcuts page in system, and let's go down to the bottom here where I have my macros. I have select notes and fit. You'll see right here. So I've got traction select all and traction zoom selected notes. So zoom selected notes is the keyboard shortcut that I put in there. If you're wondering about things you might want to add, one thing is to possibly search for MIDI in the keyboard shortcuts. That would give you ideas like insert new MIDI clip would be something you could add or MIDI selection tool mood. Here's move note start right and left. Let's add insert new MIDI clip. That seems like a good one. So down here at the end, I'm going to click plus. It's currently empty. Let's rename it. Call it MIDI clip. And let's give it a color, maybe match the randomized velocity. And now we just assign an action from the standard shortcuts, clip, insert new MIDI clip. There's also shortcut, standard shortcut G for that as well. But if you don't remember that, you can keep that on here. Then when you go up here on the track, if we wanted to add a new MIDI clip, you can just click new MIDI clip right there. And that adds our MIDI clip. Now there's lots of ways to do that. You could drag it, clip in. You can also right click here, insert new MIDI clip. But it's an example of adding your own thing to this toolbar. You can also remove it if you want. So that's how my customized note editing toolbar works. This eventually will be rolled into the release. If you're on the beta, you have it now, or you can download it and install it. As I showed you at the beginning, I would not recommend running a beta on anything important, but if you're already running the beta, take a look down here. Also, if you're running this, watching this some time after it's made, it may already be here, the note editing toolbar. I didn't mention how to turn this on or off. You probably know if you're on waveform 11, that you go up to the eye that turns parts of the UI on and off, and it's this thing right here. It says, show hide the quick actions panel right there. You can also click this here to open up a, a pop-up window version of this thing. And I have the note editing toolbar on there, but you could put any of the toolbars on this or even load the mixer on this as well. For MIDI editing, I don't find this as useful as just having it right here below the MIDI editor. So I hope you found this video interesting and I hope it answered your questions about the note editing toolbar for the quick actions feature in Waveform 11. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in another video very soon.